سلام بچه ها and خوش اومدید Welcome to this Thursday stream of Las Plumas I am Plumas and I'm gonna be your host for this shiny, golden, bright Thursday afternoon, evening, whatever you call it I never got, like, I think I've, I feel like I've said this multiple times already but I really cannot fathom the differences between the evening and the afternoon because in my culture that's not something, we don't do that we have that of it, like we have that's it but this is not an invitation for you to explain to me because multiple times this has been explained carefully detailed to me and I just I don't do that it's just my brain it's not it's not that I don't understand if you give me a clock and I will see that the hours on it and I can recognize when the evening starts but still it says nothing to me of bringing, I guess. Hello, Nana, how are you? Hello, Typhoon, Nazi Zounds. Hello, Rui. Oh, it's been so long since the last time I saw you. You are right, I'm so happy to have you here because today we are finally, finally gonna dive into this topic. I'm so excited. And, Bocha, this is the end of season three, three seasons already on Twitch. Where does time go? How has it happened? How? I'm completely speechless. Not, I just, it's really been three years since I started on Twitch. And just, I'm not all right. I don't know. I'm, I'm delighted on the one hand, but on the other, I'm ter- terrified because time just flies so much. And I was just, I was talking to my patrons the other day and I was just thinking that time, like la- last year, I was not finished with my thesis yet. And it, I was really not close to submission, although I really wanted to believe it was, but it wasn't. And uh, and now I'm a doctor, I finished, and here we are celebrating our third season finale, which I'm super excited. And today's um, today's topic it was chosen by my patrons, so shout out to my beautiful patrons, Tia Murshid and Ajdot specifically, because they were the ones choosing this topic. And I'm really glad that my Patreon family is completely full of magpies and crows and creatures and gremlins that are attracted to the golden and shiny things as much as I am. Congrats for finishing three seasons. That's awesome. Oh, thank you. I see something. I am, I, I am actually very amazed because it doesn't seem, if you ask me, it doesn't seem that long. And if I think of it, I'm always like, oh, but I haven't covered all the topics. On that note, I need to tell you something, but sure. I, I haven't covered all these topics and I haven't spoken that much on Twitch, but then you go back and see all the videos I have and it's like, wow, you you certainly have been speaking for a long while because if we know something here in Las Plumas Timor is that I love speaking. Right, there's something I wanted to tell you. The other day I was talking to a friend about Darius and uh, his empire. And I wanted to show them the video that I supposedly made. Hello, I'm not saying Ross. I know that Reesoup, oh my God, 23, 23 months in a row. That's nearly two years in a row. I'm just, thank you so much, not Ross, for all your support every time, everywhere. It's just, you're, you're a gem. So I wanted, I was talking about that and I wanted to show my video, my stream, which I remember I did. I guess I was like super sure that I had covered that and his empire in a to- in one stream. It was really odd to me that I hadn't, but I couldn't find it. It was not on Twitch. It was not on YouTube. So for a very brief moment, I thought that I actually had not yet covered that. But it was very odd because I remember when I spoke about Cyrus, I said I would, and it was I, I just have the memory I did. So I went back on my Instagram stories, like on the archive, and I saw it, it was there. I announced the stream, I did this, I made the stream, I did it because I remember Nosoy Ross made a meme of it, of me saying, you didn't have a right to rule and so and so. It's completely gone now, Bacho. Like it's gone, it's not on Twitch. I must have not been, I just didn't save it. I didn't save it, I didn't post it on YouTube, so it's gone. It's entirely gone from existence. And I'm, on the one hand, I'm like laughing at myself for that because it's funny, it's just like, this is how much I care. But on the other, it's just like, it's a pity that we have the other two. We have Zexus and Dara, and sorry, we have Zexus and Cyrus, but we don't have that at, and it's just like, what what should I do? I need to speak with like the peoples around me because I don't know if like if starting the fourth season with that I wish 
because I already did that, or just letting it go, as in, like, if you were there, you enjoyed it, and it was cool, but that's it, it's gone now, like, forever, there's, there's not a way of recovering, like, Salam Pichu, there's not a way of recovering that stream, so I honestly don't know what to do, I'm like, ha, huh. but I, that is something I wanted to share, that's it, it's, it's not, it's not that interesting, but I, I, in case you have a memory, in case you've attended that stream, it did happen, rest your souls, like, we know, it's just, I am, I'm a little bit stupid, I'm a little bit dumb, and I did not save it. Like, absolutely not. I didn't... Mm -mm. <laughs> because I didn't. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, light my candle with my invisible lighter. This candle smells amazing. I cannot tell you what it smells like. Hmm. <gasps> Adorno! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, we've missed you so much. This is one of the OG Bachar, one of the ones that spin that from the very beginning. How are you? I'm like super happy to having you here. Oh my god, this is this my my season finale uh present? Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> so happy to have you here, Bacho. Ah! My heart feels very warm. Um, so yeah, as uh, he mentioned, it's been two, it's been two months since he, I was here last time. So sorry, things are crazy. Don't be sorry. I'm just, if anything, I'm just happy to have you here. Like super happy to see you. So not need to apologize. I understand. We all understand. So first thing is first. Do you like my earrings? Aren't they like super suitable for what we're gonna see today? Like I knew I was gonna wear those the minute my patrons chose this topic. I was like, yes. I have the perfect pair of earrings for this. They like golden leaves, like they're supposed to be leaves. Although someone in my family commented they saw a butterfly, or half of it at least. I, I in my head the leaves, but I'm okay with the butterfly thing. So, what are we going to see here? Is actually this stream might be a little different in the sense that it might be just me showing you pictures and saying isn't this gorgeous isn't this lovely isn't this beautiful basically because i wanted to cover this topic since so like, it's, it's been ages since i wanted to but it was finally because my patrons also wanted to hello varu i thought they were butterflies they really could cool. either way thank you i love them and you couldn't really i'm gonna try to dim the light a little bit because i want you to see how is this helping they're not they appear almost white but because of my light setting up here but they're not white they're actually very like dark gold but i, I reckon it must be because of the lighting or because of i am completely pale like i'm a ghost um so as i was saying it it might be a little different it might be a little shorter this stream could also be in look plumas the magpie yes the crow the magpie definitely like i embrace my magpie self like no no doubts on this so i i wanted to do this because the saka the scythian culture has been in the back of my head since i started specializing in iran since i started studying uh, iran i went on an exhibition on the first year of my phd i went to an exhibition on the british museum on the scythians particularly and i loved every bit of it because the scythians i didn't know much about them in fact i didn't know how to pronounce scythians in english I've I've heard Scythians, but I don't like. I say Scythians. I and apparently that's correct because that's how one of the curators of the British Museum said that. I'm just taking that because it's easier for me. And I didn't know much about them, and I was just fascinated by the exhibition. It was such a powerful thing for me to see all these pieces around, and not only gold pieces, but many others, and learning about them. I couldn't. I couldn't stop because if something, if there's something in history I love, are ah, nomadic horse people so it was just fitting it was just fitting that i ended up talking about them and and recently the fitzwilliam museum released this beautiful beautiful catalogue from the exhibition gold of the great step and it was like the sign it was a sign because i was a little bit self-conscious not gonna lie it was a little bit self-conscious about this topic because it's not definitely not my area of expertise although i read like a lot hello celebrities and um so I just wanted to talk 
like more than to just talk, to show you, to share everything I was fascinated by with you. So this this might not be the super most technical stream of all existence, but definitely is one that comes from the heart. And I think with all the bling, pissass and rustle dustle the Scythians had, I think it's just fitting for the season finale. So let's just start. I'm not drinking tea today because I had a lot at work. <laughs> A little bit of personal break. It's been hectic at work lately. I am like piled up with stuff to do. So I tend to overdo my doses of caffeine throughout the day. And um, fortunately for me, I know where to stop. So just Venom and I say hello to the butcher Venom. Hello. <laughs> and do please drink water, okay? I said this before. Sodas are fine. Fisted rings are all right. But please, your body needs water. Make sure you provide it with it. So, gold working from the Scythian culture. Quite an ambitious starter for me, but, but, the Veneno Cup is awesome. You know, I, I have a personal quabble with Noso Ross because he keeps on calling him Veneno because that's the original name it had when it was translated in Spanish. And I keep calling it Venom because that's the name I got to know him by. So it's like, oh my God, I have like so many images. Like you don't, like you don't know. You, you don't, you're like, no idea. Like no idea. All right. So let's just ripe into it. Before actually, before going into the goal making thing, there are some things we need to cover first. Did you guess what they are? Could you fathom it? Hello, I'm Javi Prado. I couldn't miss a Scythian stream. That's my budget. Oh my God, you're so committed to this. I need to talk. I need to talk about the Scythians for more. This has been a success. I mean, normally my English speaking audience is much more like shy onto these things, but no. Damn, we'll bring you nomadic horse people. I was saying that we need to explain something, cover something uh, first. That is time and space, when and where. In other words, context. So, Something super important to me to define at least is what do we mean when we say Scythian? I'm pretty sure you've heard that word at some point, you've come across it, but what does that really mean? If we are precise, the word Scythian people, are, it involves, it is a great umbrella under many different ancient nomadic tribes were included. The scholars agree that the Saka tribes were of Iranic origin and their language did belong to the eastern branch of the Iranian languages. That's another thing to comment, Saka. You might have heard them referred to as the Saka people, although the Saka were just a percentage of those tribes. Why do I particularly call them Saka? Because I love the word. As simple as that. I love the word. I think it sounds beautiful and powerful. So yeah, that's, that's the reason I'm referred to them as, as, as Saka. So the Scythian cultures, as at least, I'm going to be super insistent on this. There are many, many tribes inside the Scythian culture umbrella. That's the first thing you need to like engrave, like engrave. Yes, madam, of course. All right. Um, <laughs> Like to choose tattoo with fire in your brain in order to understand them better is that there were many different tribes and when we say the Scythian cultures we're referring to many people and it's not there's not just there's not such a one thing as the Scythians like they're, they're not a homogeneous like at all so um I have uh, uh, two maps uh, in here this one was made by Paul Goodhead and the Scythians, called, the Scythian cultures actually occupied what we call the Great Steppe, the Eurasian Steppe, from the Black Sea to the Altai Mountains. And you can see it here. Uh, the Scythian culture flourished between the 900 and the 200 before Common Era. Flourished, they didn't disappear. So that means they interacted with many of our favorite people, like the Achaemenids and the Parthians. In fact, the Saka appear on the tomb of Dara and Xerxes as part of the provinces of the empire. Let me show you the other map I had because you can see a little bit like is this is a little bit of a close up in here. Here you can see once the Achaemenes and the Seleucids were gone, the Scythians uh, were in contact with the Parthians. And this is like a 
close up. At this point in time, the Scythians were very different. We're going to see that uh, a little bit later on the stream. But yeah, you can, for like a better glimpse of where they are, like this is part, this is the western side of the Eurasian steppe. So, I was saying that the Saka appear in the tombs of Dara and Xerxes, and of course, of course, I bring, I bring some images on that, but I has, as I have so many, I need to look for them. Just give me a second. Where did I put that one? I'm not lying when I say like I have a million images in here. Alright. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, here we have it. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to show you another one first because the Saka not only appeared in um, in the tombs but also in Persepolis, of course. And here we have the Saka delegation and the uh, staircases of the Apadana. This picture is from the Oriental Institute, by the way, and I really like it. So, just get a good look. Just take a look at them. Watch them, see them, observe them. And I'm going to ask you something later. Here is a Saka delegation at Persepolis. And here we have a close up of a portrait of one of these ambassadors. Mm. And we have someone, a Saka, that had name and surname, as we say in Spanish. We have another someone in the inscription of Behistun made by Darius. So, but have you noticed something in all these images? Is there something that catches your eye? Talking about this and this image. You see that again. This is one of my favorite delegations. I just really, really like this one. And of course, the Saka are bringing horses, which is tremendous and I love it. David the Gnome was Scythian? Apparently so, exactly. Good eye, good eye and good catch. They have these pointy hats on their heads that they supposedly were. In, uh, in here, on the, uh, the image to the right, the image to the right is from the Behistun inscription. And as I said, it was made by Darius around, we believe, 519 before Common Era. And here, the person we have represented is Skunha, the leader of the Saka tribes at the time, who was defeated in battle by Dara, of course. <laughs> well, at least he said he defeated them in battle because with that, I wish you need to take everything with a pinch of salt. Like, you really never know. Anyway, so um, we know from this inscription that the Saka at the time occupied the Aral Sea region, at least under uh, Skunja's rule, and we can see these pointy hat. In fact, in this inscription, they are described as Saka Tigra Jauda, which means wearing pointed caps, Saka, the Saka who wear the pointed hats. And, and, there's people that has recreated, there's this artist whose, whose name I am going to completely butcher and I'm sorry, his, his surname is Pod, Podnajok, no, Pochnakob, Pochnakob. I really so I'm really sorry if I don't pronounce this properly. It's like I, I'm I'm not familiar with this pronunciation. But this is uh Pochnakob Pochnakob, uh as a rendition of the Scythian, and you can see the cap and you can see the rider. And there's another one we have here, which I also really like. These two were found on the blog of the British Museum, by the way, in case you want to get a uh, better look at them. And you can see those pointy hats, as we have in um, in uh, the reliefs of Persepolis, which I really like. Mm. And also, we've preserved these hats, but I, I didn't get a picture of them because I wanted to like I wanted to show you uh, something else. And um, let's see the delegation again. And one one fun fact before actually going into the gold thingy, the word saka in Old Persian, designated nomad tribes, like very broadly, as a generic, a generic term for tribes that lived in the Eurasian steppe. So here you have it, another reason to take that Scythian term with a pinch of salt. 
Now I cannot stop imagining them singing, we are seven times stronger than you, Tudara. Apparently that didn't work in their favor in here. So, all right, now, on to the shinies, on to the shinies. So let's show the first artifact. Ar art artifact, I cannot speak today. I'm really sorry. I'm just excited. All right, so on to the first artifact, which is the one I use for advertising it. What was the favorite name of the Scythians? Cynthia. Oh my dear God. <laughs> oh my dear Satan dressed up as a flamenca. Why do you have to do that? Oh my God. Pluma's drinking game when shuffle every time she has to deal with a difficult as hell phonem, phonem when pronouncing a name. Oh my God. You would be gone in like 20 minutes given how poorly I pronounce certain things. But yeah, this first shiny, by the way, was made between 400 and 350 before common era. On to the gold, the shinies. I am, as we say in Spain, a magpie, which are, I am a crow. And to top, to top the cake, I am Spanish. So that means I am genetically attracted to everything that shines. If it's gold, well, that's where we hit jackpot. Disclaimer to myself, the Saka tribes did not only produce artifacts in gold, we have all the metals as well. But since gold artifacts are the best known, I reckon they would be the easiest for an introduction to them. I'm not gonna lie, I offer this ring to my patrons because of this book I showed you before, and it was a big exhibition. And uh, I gathered it would be the perfect introduction to the Scythian and the culture through art history because I didn't want just to sit and throw a bunch of data at you, um, to your beautiful faces. Nah, if I can't, I want to bring you pieces, art, archaeological findings and memory of these people we're going to discuss about today. And um, if we know something about the great step is that the gold artifacts were plenty. But how come? How come there is so many of these pieces labeled Asaka gold? Well, to better understand the metalwork from this period, we need to turn to the landscape, to geography first. Let's just see another one. Let's just see. I'm, going to, I'm just showing you the pieces in order. I have them here. Oh, the arches. I love the arches. These ones belong to either the 5th or the 4th century before Common Era. You're going to see there are many that are close in time, and I will explain that later. There were some gold mines in the Altai Mountains. A few times that the Greeks controlled it were the times where they produced golden coins. Exactly, unholy prayer. That is exactly what I was going to say. In modern-day Kazakhstan, which is uh, uh, Altai Mountains were more or less in Saudi Arabia. They are very close in, like, in Kazakhstan, which is like modern day Kazakhstan. Gold deposits are very, very common, especially on East Kazakhstan, very close to the Altai Mountains, where the earliest gold artifacts were found. Those dated from the second millennium before Common Era. That's a while ago. So, as I was saying, gold bearing deposits were very common in the land. And we have archaeological evidence of uh, ancient gold mining there. For example, in the late 18th century, some Russian officers reported they found the remains of a prehistoric mine with tools and many artifacts inside a leather bag. Can you imagine being that person? Can you just imagine going, you know, finding things like this? on a leather bag, on an ancient mine. The impact, like the impact, it was like, just amazing. How could you not love the artists? How could you not love everything in here? How beautiful this is. Can we pay attention that they have taken the time to model, to sculpt, to, to, to smelt all the horse's legs? Because this is not a monster, this is not a mythical creature, these are two horses as they are two riders on scene and each horse has four legs. Therefore, all eight of them should be represented. Nobody was asking them for this, possibly with a second head. It would be very clear, it would have been clear that there was a second horse, but no, they dedicated time and effort to present another horse. This is amazing.
Like, oh. Like, wow. It's just incredible. Like, this is from the 4th to the 3rd century, so a little bit later than the other ones. But still, it's impressive. Um, do we have any information on how they were done? Probably by smelting and on a foundry and a little bit of smitey, but not much, actually. We, we found some tools, but that's like very little. And I'm not a technical, I'm not a professional jeweler. I just like the shinies. So, um, oh yeah, I was mentioning deposits. And let's give you a super quick lesson on mining. There were two types of gold deposits near the Altai Mountains, the primary and the secondary. I was gonna make a joke with uh, Spain's latest song for Eurovision, like Siempre Primera, Nunca Secondary, but I think that is, uh, that's no, a wrong audience. Um, were they wearables, like necklaces and so, or what were they used for? I'm gonna answer all your questions through other stream, and if by the end is there something I didn't answer, please feel free to ask, but yeah, I'm gonna talk about that in a bit, Baru. Um, Oh, is that the gold deposit? There are two kinds, primary and secondary. The primary are the deposits that require mining and smelting, and those are under the surface of Earth. The secondary are the alluvial deposits that are caused by weathering conditions like rain or water streams that run downhill. I'm pretty sure you've seen those in films, especially on westerns. Like, definitely, you've seen some of those. More images. Like, I have a ton, and we have like or the talk, the gold talk from the 4th century with the panthers and the little pieces inlaid on them. Oh my dear lord, this beauty. This is for the neck, by the way. This is a piece for the neck, so I don't know, would be like around 15 to 20 centimeters. Like the diameter would be like 20 to yeah, between 20 or something. Oh my God, this beauty. Actually, all the tiny spaces you see there were occupied by tiny uh, inlaid jewel pieces. Sometimes they were semi-precious stones, but they're, they're, they're falling. I still, although the, they are falling, first of all, it looks amazing with the hollow spaces. And second of all, to me, it's just impressive that we preserve this in this state. Because, oh, mama, like, I, saw, I, I warned you. I warned you this was going to be me just saying, wow, look at this, amazing, beautiful, and all that jazz. So do not expect to learn much from this stream, apart from that I like gold things. I would wear this. All right, Bacha, if you would wear this on your neck, post a tea glass on the chat, which I'm going to do because I would so wear this and I'm going to post three of them. I would so wear this to a party, to a wedding, to a normal day at work. These are unisex, by the way. These are not just male objects. Like, thank you, no soy rosa. Thank you. Like, just as always, thank you. Oh, this one, this one, this one. This is gold thread, filigran, and gold plaques. This is a pectoral. This belongs, like, it, it attaches to your neck and goes downwards. This is a little bit bigger. This was made on the second century before, com like before common era. And this has the level of detail on this. Although this has been influenced. Oh, thank you for the fellow. The level of detail in this one, um, it, has, it has its explanation. I'm going to cover that in a second. Uh, I don't know how much they weighed it. You also, you will wear this one. Like, I, I think, I think, Typhoon, you will look so gorgeous on one of these. I just know you would. Like, I, I think I'm going to give you a copy for your birthday or something because it's like, oh my God. I don't know. I don't know because sometimes there are gold, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Gold sheaths. Sometimes it's not like, pure gold as a stone of it but they're sheets that are um that worked on for them to be a little bit lighter because yes yeah, some of those items had to be wearable so oh and this one this dough that is just like everything this is one of my favorite pieces and you maybe are asking yourselves why because the dough the stag the deer i i at first i thought it was a dough because 
it doesn't have any horns and antlers. But then I thought, like, I look at it and I thought maybe they're fallen because normally they do not represent does, which are the female, they represent stags or deers, which are the male. And they love it because it looks like the animal is smiling. And I love this one. So precious and so accurate as well. Like the, the, exactly the detail and the precision of the piece. It's anatomically correct. It did, I'm, I am getting ahead of myself. I'm going to go back to reading some of my notes. And um, so the art of the saga that we are seeing here today are mainly decorative objects and especially, especially jewelry. Right? I would also like to bet her. What is that? Like, me, 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 me. This is like, you know what? This would be like the, the uh, possibly the stereotypical stag that comes close to a Disney princess that has lost his, herself in the forest or something like that. Because with that gentle look, it would be like, ah. So, uh, yeah, most of these artifacts are made after the Scythians were gradually displaced towards the west by another tribe. The Sarmatians, Sarmatians. I don't know how to pronounce those in English, so I'm going to say the Sarmatians, the Sarmatians. These happened uh, like around um, between the fourth century before Common Era to the second century of Common Era. So the Parthians were also around, yay! Um, and something very interesting happened here, and that is that the Saka became sedentary, and they were in very close relationship with their neighbors, the Greeks especially. And the art of the Saka include, as you see it, animals. Many of them! And that's only one of the reasons I love them. The animals are vigorous with a mixture between realism and naturalism and abstractions because they wanted to make the animals recognizable but not exactly photorealistic. You can see many animals appear alone, like this one, or, for example, in combat. So the Sarmatian and Scythian, nope, different tribes. Oh yeah, this one. I, I mean, this one. I'm going to say this one about all of them. This is a belt buckle before, like between the 4th and the 5th century before Common Era. And this is incredible. Incredible. Amazing. Incroyable. Just like, ziba. Unbelievable. Me cago en mis santas gafas, qué bonito es. And uh, so here you can see two creatures actually. I know um, they used to make all that work while being nomads, exactly. That's one of the reasons that it's impressive. But also the gold production skyrockets when they become a little bit more sedentary. And um, this one, this horse is being. I wanted to find a more gentle word, but it's being defeated by completely smashed by this mythical beast that we see. It's like a feline, but it has horns on its head and it has wings sprouting from the shoulders. And we know, we know that this creature, this type of creature was super common in Central Asia. And uh, Hayley Ziba. It's just that Haley Ziba means very beautiful in Persian. So Typhoon over here just taught you something, as she usually does. And um Oh my god. Okay, I'm sorry. So um these these combat between beasts is a very strong influence by, from from the other Eurasian cultures. And at the same time, some of the latest pieces saw great influence of the Greek art, like the pectoral hours, like Ah, uh, where's the pectoral? I wanted to go back here. This one is a later piece, so it has much more influence of the Greek style. And the other one that's normally shown is a comb, is a gold comb. I don't know in which circumstance would anyone comb their head with this, but this exists. But if you look at this, if you look at the figure standing on the top, um, you can really see the influence from the Greeks. Like they, they look very much like Greek sculptor. And um, let's talk. Like you know, see in here, like we we 
the approach is different. It's like they almost mimic some of the sculptors we find in Hellas. And I wanted to speak about them for a second, though, the Greeks. We know by textual sources that goldsmith was something very important in ancient Greece, although very little pieces have survived to this date from that period. Some of them were found precisely in Scythian burials, in the Kurgan. So that indicates many things that I love. They indicate trade, they indicate communication, exchange and contact. Isn't it beautiful to think that some of the artifacts belonging to the Greek art, as we call it, as we love labeling things, don't we? They have been preserved precisely because someone took them to a different place and buried them and somehow protected them. And that's the reason we can see them now. To me, it's my blowing. The wings on the lion, the the the, um, the bed buckle, the bed buckle, the on the bed buckle. You mean this one? All the wings are everything. The wings are absolutely magnificent. And um, back to the animals, yeah, because they are the main protagonists of Saka gold artifacts. We have combat scenes. We have animals standing alone, and sometimes we have animals accompanying humans. Um, all right, here. All right, I'm going to save this one for later. Here you see an example of a gold plague of an animal standing alone. Could you guess this one? I don't know if you could, but this is a kind of panther. It's a kind of feline that was very common in the Eurasian steppe because before that part of the world was filled with felines. It was very common in Iran, for example, there were cheetahs and leopards and lions, like super common. That five beast below the combat scene has blown my mind. Which one on the pectoral, you mean? You, you might need to refer to them. If you want to see them again, just tell me. I would like, I'm very gladly put them in here. So I, I was saying that we have some animals that are accompanying humans. For example, in here, some schoolers have, um, they have tried to give an explanation for what we see in here. And apparently the best regarded opinion is that they, um, this is a burial. Like these two, the two warriors and a third one laying down, which is apparently has passed away. And these other two people are burying the, um, the third one, their fallen companion. In here, you can see the warriors, you can see their faces with beers. The other one doesn't have one. This one, it might be a woman though, that one. Like the one holding the man's head, possibly. I don't know, I'm speculating here. Please take it with a pinch of salt. It could be a woman and we see a tree, which were very important for the saga as well. And we can see a quiver with the arrows and uh, the other person's holding the horses and you can kind of hint a beard on them. And the horses, as I said, they took the time to represent all four legs, which is impressive if you ask me, because that was definitely not required, but they wanted to. And um, I, this is one of my favorite pieces, of course, but I wanted to show you one speaking about combat and beasts, because this one got me thinking for a while. There are many mythical beasts as well, and some of them are completely unknown to us. We don't have any textual sources or stories about them. We can trace them back by doing something we call compared mythology that consists on... Oh, of course. Thank you, Serapis. So, well, as I was saying, uh, compared mythology, that consists of trying to reconstruct some of the mythical stories by learning about the surrounding cultures that we know a little better. Sometimes it kind of works. Sometimes it does not help at all because the cultures were too different. So um, the mythical beasts are sometimes recognizable, like griffins, for example, but the saga gave the beast a twist, like a new sense to their preference. And... Um, like this one, for example, I know the, the beast with the striped body must be a feline. But what on earth is the other one? It looks like a, like, all right, the face to me looks like a boar. But it has a very long tail, clearly has claws, and this kind of mane 
spine on its back that's gorgeous but to you what is this to you because i i don't know someone commented it could be a wolf and these spines actually hair that they are presenting you know how the, the hair on the back of wolves spins up like it kind of crisps when they're getting aggressive it could be one explanation as good as the next one but we don't know this is like i really like this one because you have a very easy identifiable beast um you have it there it's a feline kind of panther a tiger some kind of bobcat but then you have the other one it's like what what on satan's realm is that what's this it's just maybe it's even like maybe it was an animal that was there i don't know to me any explanation is good i like to think of it as like a mixture of a boar because i don't know if you have ever i don't know if you have ever encountered boars but they are aggressive as hell and very dangerous and uh and then the claws of it i like it's like uh an angry platypus oh my goodness gracious a very angry one uh a dog probably a sight hound i'm thinking of some sort of a land seahorse land seahorse a scythian pokemon and i i see that no one's taking this seriously which i really enjoy for me it looks like a dog type but the crane in the the crane or the mane the mane in the back it's like yeah the mane in the back is really like it's giving out weird sensations it's like I really want to believe it was a boar, but for only one reason, and that is that Verifragna, my favorite Yazata, could turn into a boar, but it was not a regular one, it was a battle one. So I'd like to think that this might be him. Zero clue on that, like absolutely zero clue, minus 10 clue on that, if you, if you may. But it's like, we're never gonna know unless we play with a Ouija board and we take from the dead someone. Which, no, of course, not gonna happen. Like, I'm not, not from here. More things, more stuff. All right, so I show you this one already. Let's show you the comb. But yeah, this, I, I'm gonna go back to the archers for a moment because they are gonna serve my purpose. They are gonna help me explain something. Because Varu, for example, at first was asking about size. Well, as expected, like, something, this is something logical to think about, like how big or how small they are. As expected from nomadic people, these pieces are small. I said they started to settle down, but I did. But that does not happen overnight, but yeah, it's just it's a process and old habits die hard. Therefore, pieces continue to be small. Why? Because they need to be portable. You need to be able to carry them with you, your valuables and stuff. Saka tribes were used to be on the move. So what we're talking about, they are, we're talking about like 30 centimeters in length for some of the pieces, and that's a big one. Um, 15 to 10, some of them are incredibly detailed and incredibly petite. I'm talking about like 5 centimeters from one side to the other. That is like microscopic to me, for the level of detail they have. And um, these pieces, what are they for? Because on the one of the unfortunate things about the Saka, and especially about the Saka art, is that the pieces were found either in the place they belonged, like clothing, horse trappings, decorations, uh, weapons, whatever, or they were found completely out of context, like literally scattered around or just inside a bag, like happened with these 18th uh, century Russian people. These metal pieces would be attached to clothing as I say, or to say the clothes or horse trappings, and and here you have. Oh, I was dying to get to this part of the stream because I love. If there is something I like a little bit more than gold, are animals dressed in gold. And here you have one of the reconstructions from Berel Kurgan, which is uh, one of the burials. Um, and this is this is the horse. They reconstructed by like the trappings the horse was wearing and here you can see many of these gold pieces even like they're signaled so here you have also in this picture you can see something that was very important to the Scythians as well the red dye because red color was a thing among the Scythians the the Saka really enjoyed the, the red color it was part 
of uh, of the fashion of the attires and we have another one this is another horse from Bel El Kurgan and this one is um hold on for a second yeah here you have it this one is actually reconstructed like as 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 reconstructed entirely. This is a picture from the archaeological site. And you can see in here even more gold plates and pieces all throughout the trappings the horse is wearing. Those horns, though, the horns. Any low-key funds out there, the Scythians did it first. How incredible is this? How amazing is this? I just... I just can't... Like, <laughs> look at this. Look, look at everything. Absolutely everything is stunning. The horns, though. The horns. It would make your right look like a bloody mythical beast. The impact. The sass. The the everything, the rassle-dassle vibes this is giving out. Oh, my heart. I was... When did we stop giving this to our pets? When did we stop giving this to our animals? It's just... It's just too much. This is too much. Incredible, isn't it? I... I could stare at this picture, like, forever. Like, I could. It's just, what? Um, so, all right, back to the archers for this, like, moment. Um, and people say that dressing your dogs is a modern thing. They have no idea. Anything, anything we, th we think we've invented, the ancients did it first. I'm not even talking about the medieval people, the people in the medieval ages, people in the 18th century. It's like, no, 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 no. The ancients. The ancients did it first. They were around for quite a while. So they had time and time to invent many things. And this is one of them. It's just... Oh, wow. So yeah, the archers. All right. So another use for these small pieces was on shields. They would be the ornaments placed on the central knob and the shields would have been carried by soldiers. To be honest, I... To be completely honest, right? A little bit of Marvel talking here. I'd rather have some of these pieces on my shield rather than a star. Calling out to Royce here. Um, let's see some more. But this was definitely on a shield because those holes are actually... Uh, the part and it was it was attached to the shield um, with these possibly metal nails or something. But maybe again, this could be on a shield, but this could be on a horse strapping as well, or in a coat, or on a satyr cloth, or on a quiver. Because as you've seen from the horse reconstruction, and actually we can see that from the the images of Pozna Poch. Nakov. I'm trying my best. I'm, I swear I'm trying my best. We can see that from these images that the Scythians also enjoyed um, placing ornaments on their clothing, not only their horses. So as I say, someone in the next Met Gala is gonna get them in a horse like that. I wish. I wish. They should do that. They do that like they did already a Met Gala based on like history of art. But it would really like I would have really enjoyed that someone got the nomadic horse people vibe. That would have been so fun and so beautiful to see because I do believe with these patterns and with all the information we have about the Scythian cultures, something super cool could be done. It's just, it's, I, I do believe that. I stand by that thought. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, that these pieces, they could be attached to um, shields, clothing, so with some of them don't know. And I wanted to go back to this one, to the doe and the stag, because the repetition of the stag shows how important these animals were for the visual language of the Saka tribes. We have a lot of them, like a lot of deer and horses, and that speaks of, of a perception of the surroundings, an observation of nature, and a recognition of these animals as somehow 
the Sackers own artistical expression because they have a selection, this many of them. I wish like these one, I didn't find a nice picture of this one, but there are many, many stags and deer, many. And somehow I enjoy seeing them and I like the like reading about that and learning from them because actually it's as i said i think i cannot say that um in a different way i cannot say that better they represent like these pieces represent what was deemed and is deemed important by the Scythian cultures what they chose to represent when they created these pieces on gold their most valuable item and they chose to do a stag. Why is that? Because it was important for them, because it was in their daily lives, because it provided with food and with ingredients and raw materials to create a variety of tools. And uh, it's just, I really like the beauty and the simplicity of it. Of course, you have, we've shown them again, we can see them once more because they're gorgeous. You have the warrior pad, for sure. Like you have the archers and you have the... Um, you you have the warriors yeah but also you have pieces like this one like uh oh i can't find it where is it where is it where is it oh this one this one is one of my favorites um this one in here this is actually one of the pieces that's most influenced by the iranian cultures because this this is a very late one i think this is uh from the this is from the british museum but you can really see how this person is basically one of the ambassadors one of the uh ministers in the persepolis beliefs of this person to the right and then you have these creatures this composite creature like the one we see in sasanian clothing and also like the one we saw um fighting the horse you remember like, the, in the one in the in the round little plague this is gold this is a gold sheet cut out and um all right what is it uh Barumora? i have a question about this one i think you mean the archers because the mouth really looks like it's in 3d but i'm guessing it's not right okay let's just go back to the archers for a moment what do you mean, Osorros? In Caravaca de la Cruz, in Spain, they have the Wine Horses Festival. I highly recommend getting to know. Getting it to know is the musical road. They do a lot of horse ornaments. Like, oh. It's not that I'm not paying attention to you, Osorros. No, I'm trying to understand what Varu's question was. Oh, the deer. Okay. Thank you, Serapis. This one. So you're asking if this is actually... All right. So what happens with this one is that the body is plain, is a little bit like thinner, but the head stands out. It looks at the viewer. So it will... It has a little bit... It has a little bit of relief. It comes out. It, if that's your question, yeah, definitely, yeah. This particular piece is not... It's like this one, for example, is mainly 2D. This is like very much plain, although it has a little bit of volume on it. But this one, the volume of the neck, like the neck actually stands out and comes to the, like it approaches the, like it invades the space and, and goes, like it's this outwards movement. Was that your question? Did I answer your question? I think I did. Okay, so it's actually looking front, so I thought it was just, oh, no, 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 it's just, uh, it, it is. Like the, the, the news, for example, the news, um, uh, the news has, um, um, has relief you can actually you could hold it in between your fingers and uh, i was i was not hoping to get this quite nah, i'm lying i'm kidding um so typhoon ask if these creature i'm actually gonna zoom it in because typhoon is asking the question do we ask typhoon is asking if these creature over here let me just zoom it out uh, for you Okay, a little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. Thankfully, it's a very good picture. Typhoon is asking if this creature is indeed Eustachio. And you know what? Possibly. I think it is. I think it is, although it doesn't have the tail as you've um, we've seen it uh in later medium but yes i think it is and here you have the, the scythians 
there's nothing called to have their own religion, but yeah, like they did. They did. They were not Mazdian, and of course they were influenced by the Mazdian cultures they were in contact with. But they do not like the Mazdayasna was not something important for them. However, this type of representation was very common in Central Asia already at that time. This this is not like I think this is. Um, let me check because I have in the catalog here. Let me just check very quick. Many, many of them, many examples, many examples. Uh, where did I see this one? Uh, I will be back with you in just a second. Oh my god, I love this book. Like so many beautiful examples in here, you have no idea. And the earrings, though, I didn't find the nice picture of the earrings, but they are everything. They're absolutely everything, but yeah. I can't find this one. I know, I know. Why can't I find it? I know I saw it in this catalogue. You know what? Possibly when I stop looking for it, it will appear. I like complete. I'm completely sure of that. Anyway, this one is from either the 4th or the 3rd century for a common era. And yeah, the Ackermen is were around already. The Parthians were around already. But this image does not happen in Persian art until very, very late. So here you have it. This is Eustachio, possibly. And if you ask me, it looks very similar to this one. Doesn't doesn't the same animal? Don't they look as the same animal? Is a feline with the wings sprouting from the shoulders and the horns. To me, they are the same animal, and that supports the theory. It's not mine. Like many people have this theory, that supports the theory that that creature is actually from Central Asian origin. It originated from the Eurasian steppe, and there was a different tradition completely regarding that so no it's not Senmurv definitely not it's Eustachio like if you ask me this would be if not Eustachio his older cousins like the the yeah Eustachio's everywhere yeah definitely every everything that's worth noting in life has Eustachio somewhere so I don't know if that answers your your question Typhoon it's definitely definitely not a sphinx because the body I mean the creature in here it's basically a lion, but it has wings and horns. So I wouldn't call that a sphinx. Mm. Definitely not call that a sphinx. No. The wings, though, are very similar to... These, these wings are very similar to the wings of the sphinxes found in Susa. And also to all the examples in Greek, uh, found in, in Greek art. Isn't this like super interesting? Aren't you like, I'm living the dream. I'm living the dream with this dream. I love it. I just, I'm oh, so happy. So, um, so in, in general, the, hello, Alekai. Well, today we have an English class. I hope I understand it. It's fine. I'm, I'm actually finishing because I had to start earlier. Because life happened. But don't worry. We're going to have this same stream next week at seven. Uh, Eustachio, pardon. It's all right. It's Eustachio is like a very old man's name in Spanish, so you can call it whatever you like. We like Eustachio. Ah, uh, so yeah, we're gonna go back to other things. Well, this is gorgeous. Here, for example, here we do have griffins. You can actually see the griffins. I don't know if I can zoom this one, and you would get a glimpse on them. I'm gonna try, but um, let me see. Let me see. They are griffins. Like they are like. 100 200 percent the griffins i think all right i can see them on my screen so probably you can too the detail on this one as i said this one is this one i like this one because is the inspiration and the um, the greek art language an idiom is stronger in this one can you see the sphinx like not the sphinx the sphinx Ugh. again high five to myself can you see the griffin properly this is 
mind blowing how photorealistic it is. It looks like fake. It looks fake. It does. I mean, it is not fake. It's definitely not fake. But it looks like it. It's just. Do I have? I'm going to look for it. As you are fascinating and feasting your eyes on the deal of that, I'm going to try to find it here. And see what they say about this. Oh my god, the Coraline pieces. I can't. <laughs> I know, I don't know, they are like, oh my god, but chap, I don't know if you are going to be able to do so, but please, please, please buy this book. Um, there's a part, oh yeah, look, and if the, they, they, they bury, I'm sorry, I'm going to jump onto the chatting screen for a moment in here, they buried the the horses with the riders because they were companions in death as well isn't this amazing it's just like oh i'm i'm really sorry for the horses though but but isn't this like super this this is how they've been found like in here you can see that hello nicola good to see you i i don't know if you are going to be able to buy this book Buy this book, I beg you. Um, all right, I was looking for the for the pectoral. There is a magi priest. There is a magus priest on one of the sheets in the gold sheets. Like I can't, like I can't. I I think I need another stream just to provide. Oh, I'm not gonna talk. I if I ever ever have a secondary camera, I'm definitely gonna go back to this book and show it to you because it's incredible i don't have other words for that oh where is it all right let me try let me try and find what i'm looking for but here we are i'm gonna leave you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right so this one this one is dated to the fourth like the fourth century before common era and um yeah this is a breastplate by the way i, I think i said that already and um This was found in Tosta Mohlia, which is uh, modern day Ukraine. And um, it's it's incredible. Like, yeah, the detail on absolutely everything. It's incredible the, the level of detail it reaches and how powerful you can really see the Greek influence, the Greek art influence in this one. It does look like it's fake, but it's not. And um, I'm just like, wow. I'm just like, 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 wow. This one, though, this one's my favorite favorite piece from the stream because that creature oh my god i appreciate your nicknaming eustachio in english but i am spanish and i like that so i'm, I'm gonna keep calling him eustachio in in spanish as well so um you see and like there's there's the, these contrasting these positions of the body to fit actually the piece like these belt buckles the, the way the horse body is twisted for example it's amazing and um this this is made with astonishing skill and they depict everything they possibly can of the animal look at this horse you can trace the mane and then the spine because it's covered in hair there's a line that defines how the body is twisted and um they're doing like they they do the same with the eustachio cousin related relative i don't know but they do the same and it's incredible it's just amazing it's like they have a very imaginative spirit because they can't convey creatures as this one i really wish this one was real at the time at least and it's just something it's just a species that became extinct but I would love for this to be something real. And then you have also the, um, 
the the beauty of representing daily life as something that was important for them like this burial over here with the horses the the eight leg thing though like oh my god a deer it has claws pichu and fangs like it it could be a supernatural deer but it has claws <laughs> And paws. It has paws. Like a cat. I don't know. So, um... So, yeah. Now is your turn, Bacha. Do you have any more questions? Do you have anything else you'd like me to talk about before leaving the beauty of the Saka gold aside and finishing, wrapping up our third season on Twitch? Oh my god, the third season. I can't believe we've made it this far. The ants less that look like a main are so majestic though. Yeah, definitely. They're beautiful. Let's see them again. There you have it. So any questions, any requests, anything you want to see again, I can pop in here. What is that on this nose, like a spiral? Is this snout, actually? Like the, the snout is quite common to representing predators. Why does this piece with the tree remind me of these frontispiece? I have to pull open that one. Ooh, I don't know. But now that you think, like, now you mention it, there's many, like, is, is this the, the frontispiece where Eskandar is laying down with Dara that has been killed? Is that one, is that the one you're talking about? Because if so, if not, either way, send it to me because I, I want to, I want to see that. I want to see that because anything remotely close to Scythian art is my jam on toast. Like, absolutely. So, oh, to wrap it up, Bacha, I think we can consider this stream concluded. And um, just wow, just thank you. Thank you for three seasons on Twitch. I'm like, oh yeah, there was another question. And what is that holding on the tree? Like a shield or something? No, it's a quiver. That's a quiver. That is the place where you put the arrows and the bow for them to be like fixed and to carry them around. Yeah, so yeah, we can. We really like to see the one with the scum. That I we need to talk. Typhoon, we need to talk further about this. But yeah, but yeah, I don't know what to say apart from thank you. Thank you for making these possible because I always said this, but without you, I wouldn't be here month after month and now year after year, three seasons already and already thinking about the fourth thank you so much because there's so many topics i didn't make the cut and uh, so many things i would like to talk to you about still so many games to play so many films to see and so many things to share with you i'm extremely delighted and happy that i opened this um the switch account and that only happened because you followed up and you stayed with me so thank you so so much for today's stream for the first one and for all of them in between. Thank you so much for just being there. Um, you know, I'm a little bit soppy. I'm going to be like a little bit sentimental on that note. But you know, spare me, like bear with me. I'm just really happy to be able to talk about the things I love and share them with you and see your enthusiasm and that you also like them as well. I'm just very happy. We started the season. Let's just do a little bit of a season recap. We started the season with Cyrus the Great. And we are closing the season with the Saga Gold. If you ask me, that's the, that is the real jackpot. I'm hitting in with you. With the beautiful community we have here on Twitch. And just, I'm just really happy. So, 
what's in the future? What's the future look like? Possibly there will be scatter streams on um, August. Maybe, maybe not. It really depends on my agenda. I might come back with um, with some interviews as well. I just don't know. I can't promise you anything. The only thing I can promise you is that we are going to resume the Twitch activity. We are going to start the fourth season, but it's not going to be in September. It's going to be in October. Why is that? Because of my job, September is going to be a month that's going to be packed with work. It's just I, I'm going to be moving quite a lot. I'm going to be traveling quite a lot. So I would not be able to just convey um, a stream schedule or whatever that's actually solid and stick to it because I'm going to be tired and I, I'm not, just, I'm not going to have time. So I thought they would be much better if we started the season, our fourth season already. Ah our fourth season in October. I hope that you're okay with that. As I said, there might be some scattered around uh, streams. I might sit here and play Tale of Beast Toon, which is the, the video game is already, do you remember the demo I played? So the video game's already out, so I might play Tale of Beast Toon. We might see or react to some cartoons as we normally do some reading of the shonome i don't know i will post about it on my social media so i invite all of you to just follow my socials and um to stay tuned to get for the for the news and uh i don't know just thank you it's like ah i want to finish but i do not want to because uh wow it's just four three seasons the fourth and the coming come on it's a big thing for me i never expected to get this to get this far and uh, i might not be the biggest streamer that's out here but i i'm certainly one of the happiest streamers that are currently on this platform and for that i'm super grateful and just like I love it. I really like it. Uh, in case you want to support the project, like because the, the, the content is not going to stop on Patreon. I, I'm, I'm going to keep on posting on Patreon. So if you want to support that and be part of the Patreon family, you know the drill. Patreon.com slash Las Plumas de Simur. That's a tier for you if you want to support uh, the project and just, you know, give a hand with this. But uh, it's been an enormous pleasure. I feel like the end of this season has been a little bit hectic, but my life has changed quite a lot. And you know what? Overall, I think we've managed. Haven't we? I think we have. I think we have managed and uh, I'm super proud of my community here. I'm super happy to have you and I I couldn't ask for more. Honestly, I couldn't ask for more. I'm just very, very glad that you tune in with me each week to learn a little bit more about Iran, Mesopotamia and China occasionally. And now, why not Central Asia? Because that is a thing that I cannot just stick to one thing. I need to cover multiple areas because if not, I just collapse or something. I don't know what will happen to me if I just do Are you hearing the seagulls? Because I have some on my window. Sure. Um, so yeah, um, I'm not gonna make this a little bit longer than uh, it's really been. So thank you, Stan. Thank you so much, Bacha, for everything. I hope you have a lovely summer. Take care of yourselves, and this summer and every day in your life, create, explore, and have loads of fun. I need to tune out now, but until the next time we see each other. I beat you. Hold up, miss. <laughs>